Hi Year 13, so uh, in this final video clip I'm going to finish off the remainder of the transition metals topic. So you need to be on page 25 which is this section 4 about variable oxidation states of transition metal elements. Now um, in this section it really just goes through, a a, goes through a few key examples of different transition metals and how they can exist in different oxidation states. You'll see here in this table it gives a range of examples of different transition metals and the oxidation states that they can exist in. So you'll notice towards the end of the rows, so titanium and copper, they form relatively few different oxidation states. So copper can exist in a plus one, plus two or plus three oxidation state, titanium a plus one, two, three or four. Towards the middle of the group, these are the, sorry, towards the middle of the row, these are the elements which can exist in a, a wider range of different oxidation states. So manganese here can exist as a plus one ion, but can it, it can go as far as existing in a plus seven oxidation state. Now, whenever a transition metal exists in an oxidation state which is a relatively low number, like a plus one state or a plus two state, they tend to exist as what we call simple ions. So just imagine the regular atom and it's lost one electron to form a plus one ion or lost two electrons to form the plus two ions. But they exist as simple ions, like these ones here, okay? When a transition metal exists in a much higher oxidation state, like some of these ones, plus five, plus six, plus seven oxidation states, they exist as much more complex ions, also known as polyatomic ions. So for example, manganese doesn't exist as a single atom and, loss, and loses seven electrons to form an Mn seven plus ion. Manganese, when it forms a seven plus oxidation state, it actually exists in this form, which we call a manganate ion. A manganese with four oxygens and a one minus charge overall. And it's because the oxygens have an oxidation state of minus two each that the manganese itself ends up in a plus seven oxidation state. Okay, so that's just a, a brief overview of how our transition metals can exist in different oxidation states. And it's because that they are able to exist in different oxidation states that it gives rise to their different properties. They can form different colours because when they have different oxidation states, they will have different levels of partially filled D subshells meaning different colours can uh, be sort of reflected from them. Similarly, that's one of the reasons why they can exist as catalysts, because being able to change oxidation state gives them those catalytic properties. Now, I'm going to go through on a piece of paper four key examples. We're going to look at the manganate ion, which is manganese in its plus seven oxidation state, and look at one of the key redox reactions it can, uh, it can uh, take part in. Um, we're then going to look at the dichromate ion. So this has got chromium in a plus six oxidation state. And we're going to look at one of the key reactions that this can take part in. And then finally, we're going to look at vanadium. Now vanadium can exist in plus two, three, four, and five oxidation states. And all these different formats of vanadium can undergo redox reactions with zinc. So I'm going to go through that as an example as well. And then once I've gone through those examples, you essentially need to be able to tackle questions which are redox titration calculations. Let me find at the bottom here. Oh no, I think it's a bit further up. So redox titration calculation where you're given usually a four, five, six, maybe a seven mark calculation involving working out an unknown quantity or a percentage purity. And it uses one of these key examples as the context of the reaction. OK, so I'll go through the three, uh, the three examples and then I'll refer back to a few, uh, a few of the calculation methods which are in this booklet. OK, so the first key example I'm going to go through is the reaction of uh, manganate ions. Now, manganate is usually found in the, in the form of potassium manganate, KMNO4. But in this situation, we ignore the potassium and we just focus on the, the manganate ion which it releases. OK, now the first thing you need to know is that the manganate will undergo a reaction to produce manganese 2 plus ion. So this, this is a good example of how manganese exists in different oxidation states because here it's in a plus 7 and it can get reduced down to a plus 2 oxidation states. So the first thing we need to do is to construct this as a balanced half equation. And I've written down on the right hand side here all the steps that you need to follow whenever balancing redox reactions. 
So first step, balance all the atoms which aren't oxygen or hydrogen. We've got one manganese on each side, so that's already done. I need to balance out oxygens with water. So because I have four oxygens here, that means I need four waters on the right-hand side to balance out my oxygens. Then I balance out hydrogens with H pluses. So I've got eight hydrogens on the right. That means I need eight lots of H plus on the left. And then the final step is to balance out the charge with electrons. So this side has an overall two plus charge. And at the moment, this side is eight plus, but one minus. So a net charge of seven plus. So I want these overall charges to be the same. So in order to do that, I need to add five electrons onto the left-hand side uh, to give it an overall two plus charge on this side as well. Okay, so this is the half equation that the manganate ion will undergo to turn into manganese 2 plus. And the example that you need to know uh, to combine this with is iron 2 plus. Iron 2 plus reacting and getting oxidized to iron 3 plus. And this is a much more straightforward half equation to construct because if it's 2 plus and it goes to 3 plus, it just means that one electron is needed to balance out the charge there. So these two half equations need to be combined. Because one half equation takes in five electrons and the other half equation gives out one, that means I need five lots of this half equation. So if I multiply this by five, and then uh, like that, and then combine this half equation with this half equation, we get an overall reaction which looks like this. MnO4 minus plus eight, lots of H pluses, and five lots of Fe2 pluses, forms manganese two plus four waters, and five lots of Fe3 pluses. Okay, so in this reaction, the manganate ion and the iron ions react in a one to five ratio. So if this sort of situation ever crops up in a calculation question, you've got to factor in this one to five ratio that they're reacting in. And one of the key pieces, the observation, what would you actually see if this reaction takes, uh, this, this reaction occurs? So the manganate ions are a real uh, deep purple color. Okay, so the reaction mixture will start off with, with this very deep purple. Now, the manganese 2 plus ions, they're not quite clear and colourless, but they definitely don't have a very strong colour, so we're going to ignore those for now. Iron 2 plus tends to be a very pale, sort of mint green colour, and iron 3 plus tends to be a darker, uh, sort of a, a brown colour. Not a dark brown, a very a pale brown. And because we tend to use these in relatively low concentrations, even though technically it's a pale brown colour, really it just looks clear and colourless. So as this reaction occurs, we go from a deep purple colour on the left hand side to pretty much a clear colourless solution on the right hand side. So that's the first example that we need to know using manganate ions going from a plus seven oxidation state down to a plus two oxidation state. Okay, so the next example I'm going to go through is um, using the dichromate ion. Now dichromate uh, typically comes from potassium dichromate. You'll have encountered potassium dichromate because that's the compound used to oxidize alcohols to aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Now, the dichromate ion has chromium in a plus six oxidation state. And when it's in a plus six oxidation state, it can get reduced down to a plus three oxidation state using the following half equation. So I'm just going to balance this out following our same rules as before. And rule number one is particularly important for this because we have two chromiums on the left-hand side. That means we have to have two chromiums on the right-hand side. Seven oxygens on the left, and that means seven lots of water are needed on the right. This then means that we need to have 14 H pluses on the left-hand side. And then if we want to balance out our charges, I've got a two minus and 14 plus on the left. So this side has an overall charge of 12 plus at the moment. Two chromium three pluses means this side's got an overall charge of six plus. So I need to add six electrons onto this left hand side and that will bring the charge on this side down to six plus to match the right hand side. 
Now, as with the manganate example that I just went through, iron 2 plus is often the, uh, the other half equation that's used with this one. So iron 2 plus will get oxidized to iron 3 plus and release an electron. And when we combine these two together, we've now got a half equation which takes in six electrons, but another half equation which releases just one. So we need to multiply that by six. 6 Fe, 3 pluses, and 6 electrons. And now we can combine these two half equations together. So when we do that, our chromate ion, or oh sorry, our dichromate ion, uh, 2 minus plus 14H plus, and 6 lots of Fe, 2 pluses, react form 2 lots of chromium, 3 plus, 7 waters, and six lots of Fe, three pluses. So when this redox reaction occurs, our chromium as part of the dichromate reacts with our iron two plus, and this time they're in a one to six ratio. Now the color change for this reaction is one you should already be aware of because it's the same color change that occurs when we carry out the reaction with alcohol. So we know that potassium dichromate goes from orange to green. During the oxidation of an alcohol to an aldehyde or ketone or carboxylic acid. So here the chromium going from a plus six and reducing down to plus three causes that orange to green colour change. Now that is quite a common example, this one to six ratio of dichromate and iron. I am just going to quickly go through another example using the dichromate ion, this time looking at an alcohol. So I've already balanced out the dichromate half equation here. Here we've got ethanol, and let's say we're going to oxidize our ethanol all the way to ethanoic acid, so CH3COOH. Now, even though these are organic molecules, we would still balance this half equation in exactly the same way as you would balance any other um, redox half equation. So step number one, balance all the elements that aren't oxygen and hydrogen. Well, I've got two carbons, and I've got two carbons, so that's fine. We need to balance our oxygen using water. I've got one oxygen there, I've got two oxygens there, so that means I need a water on this side. Let's balance out hydrogens with H pluses. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, versus one, two, three, four. So that means I need four lots of H plus on the right-hand side. And that means then I need four lots of electrons on the right-hand side. So we've got an equation where one of the half equations takes in six electrons on one side and the other one gives out four electrons on the other side. And of course these two values need to match. So we're going to multiply the top half equation by two to turn this into 12. And we're going to multiply the bottom half equation by three to turn this into 12. So that is going to look like um, 12 electrons, two lots of dichromate and 28 lots of H plus turning into four chromiums and 14 waters. And then underneath, we're gonna have three lots of water. We're gonna have three lots of ethanol, forming three lots of ethanoic acid, 12 H pluses and 12 electrons. So this half equation here and this half equation here can now be combined to give us our overall redox reaction. So my electrons are going to cancel, so of course I don't need to include those. Two lots of dichromate, 28 H pluses, three waters, well I'll just fit it under here, and three lots of ethanol, make four lots of chromium three plus, 14 lots of water, um, three lots of ethanoic acid, and 12 lots of H plus. And the final thing I need to do is any more cancelling that I can. So I can get rid of the three waters on this side by reducing the number of waters on this side by three. So that's going to go down to 11. I can get rid of those 12 H pluses by reducing this by 12. So that's going to go from 28 down to 26, down to 16. 
Okay, so that will give us the overall redox reaction for potassium dichromate oxidizing ethanol to ethanoic acid. Same color change as last time. So this, if we were to um, answer a question, a calculation on this, we're dealing with a two to three ratio of the dichromate ions to the ethanol. Okay, the final example of variable oxidation states that we're going to look at is to do with vanadium. Now, vanadium can exist in four different oxidation states, in a plus two, plus three, plus four, or plus five oxidation state. And um, examples of these are already on page 18 of your note pack, and how vanadium, when it's in a two plus, exists in this violet colour. When it's three plus, it is blue. Vanadium, in its plus four oxidation state, is a VO2 plus ion, and that's green and vanadium when it's in its plus five oxidation state is VO2 plus, which is yellow. Don't get these two mixed up, okay? Being VO2 plus is different from being VO2 plus, so make sure you're clear on those. Now, essentially, you need to be able to construct half equations for the conversion of any of these vanadium uh, ions to reduce them down to a lower oxidation state. So you could have to do vanadium in its plus five down to plus four, plus five down to plus three, plus five down to plus two. Or you could have to do vanadium in its plus four state down to plus three or down to plus two, or vanadium from plus three down to plus two. So there's lots of different combinations of redu uh, reducing these vanadium ions down to lower oxidation states. In order to do that, our reducing agent that we use is zinc and zinc always gets oxidized up to zinc 2 plus, releasing two electrons. So I've just got two here to go through as examples. So let's say we take vanadium, which is in its plus five oxidation state, VO2 plus, and we want to reduce it all the way down to vanadium in its plus two oxidation state. So I balance this half equation in the same way as before. Two oxygens, that means two waters, four hydrogens, that means four lots of H plus. And if I check the charge, this is two plus, this side is five plus, so I need three electrons on this side. And that makes complete sense, because if I'm going from plus five down to plus two, I need to add three negative electrons to bring that plus five charge or oxidation state down to four to three to two, okay? I've got two and three electrons, so let's multiply this by three and let's multiply this by two. And when I combine those together, we're gonna to get three lots of zinc reacting with um, eight lots of H plus and two lots of VO2 plus. And then we're gonna make three lots of zinc two plus. We're gonna make two lots of vanadium two plus and four waters will form, okay? If you were asked about the observation, vanadium when it's in its plus five oxidation state is yellow. Vanadium in its plus two oxidation state is violet. Here's another one. Again, I've just picked one of these combinations at random. Let's look at vanadium in its plus three oxidation state, VO2 plus going to vanadium three plus. One oxygen, so I need one water. Two hydrogens, so two H pluses. And then if I look at the charge, this is three plus, this is four plus, so one electron is needed. So that means I need to multiply this half equation by two if I'm gonna combine it with the zinc one. So that means zinc plus four lots of H pluses and two lots of VO2 plus will go to zinc two plus, two lots of vanadium three plus and two lots of water. Okay, so here my zinc and vanadium are reacting in a one to two ratio. Here the zinc and vanadium are reacting in a three to two ratio. So again, factoring those ratios if you get asked calculation questions on these. Here the observation VO2 plus that's going to start off green and vanadium three plus goes to a blue colour. So you could be asked about the observations that you'd uh, see with these. Now the one final thing I'm going to mention to do with this is to do with vanadium 2 plus. Vanadium 2 plus is really hard to form because the moment vanadium 2 plus is formed, oxygen in the atmosphere reacts with it to oxidise it back up to vanadium 3 plus. So if you wanted to form 
vanadium 2 plus you need no air or no oxygen present because the moment you form the vanadium 2 plus it ends up getting oxidized up to the vanadium 3 plus if oxygen gas is present so in all these different examples you need to be able to apply information that's given in a question to construct the right uh, redox reaction and then use that reaction to carry out a calculation on whatever the scenario is from your question Okay, so what we've gone through there is the information about the redox reactions involved with potassium manganate ions. So you've got some a worked example here and also an example of the sort of calculation that you might have to solve in an exam question. Then we've gone through the example with potassium dichromate. Um, the dichromate one, which I went through with iron, shows this one to six ratio that we discussed. Um, I also showed you an example of potassium dichromate reacting with an alcohol to oxidize it. Um, so that one you might have to um, sort of apply to slightly different scenarios. And then we've also looked at the redox reactions involving uh, vanadium. Okay, so vanadium always combines with uh, zinc. So zinc is our reducing agent and the vanadium in its plus five oxidation state can be reduced to plus four or plus three or plus two with these various different conditions. Uh, now... There's a few last bits which I'm not going to discuss with you. There's just bits of book work. So you'll be able to have a quick read through about the redox reactions involved in Tollins reagent. Tollins reagent is used to test for aldehydes. And if an aldehyde is present, you get your silver mirror. And that's because the aldehyde is oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So there's just a bit of reading up on that you can have a look at here. And then there's two, uh, I think, two key examples of um, further redox reactions which are carried out in alkaline conditions. So you'll notice that in these redox reactions uh, we end up using hydroxide ions rather than H plus ions. So just a few key examples just to, to refer back to if you have a go at some of the questions. Now before we broke up from school um, I went through certainly with uh, two groups combined um, the procedure I use for carrying out these or for, for calculating these sort of big multi-step calculations to do with redox reactions. And I suggested whenever you take or whenever you see one of the big sort of wordy questions, which is our calculation, always try and sort of break it down into little steps uh, because then it makes the actual stages of the calculation a bit more straightforward. So hopefully you've already had a go at some of those whilst we were in school. There was just a few worked examples in your note packs here. So at this point, I reckon you're in a position to be able to complete your transition metal uh, question packs in full. So you should be able to do worksheet nine on ver the variable oxidation states of transition metals. Uh, hopefully you recognize the vanadium bit that we were just looking at. You should be able to have a go at worksheet 10. And I think you've already done some questions from worksheet 10 on some of these big multi-step calculations on redox, redox titrations. And then you should be able to have a go at um, I can scroll to it you should be able to have a go at some of the past paper questions which are right at the end of this pack uh, so all the mark schemes for these are on the shared drive so you just need to go to the shared drive you need to go to science chemistry and then TKF year 13 chemistry resources and then in the transition metal folder there you'll find the mark scheme for these so you can have a go uh, check your answers and if you struggle with any of them you can of course send me an email okay have a go at those